Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Health experts are warning of a potential summer surge because of the new Delta variant. Amika Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, we'll hear from frontline workers and the new types of patients they're seeing. Summer officially began last night around 10.30 this morning. Boy, it feels like it. You know it's summer when the morning low drops down to about 80 degrees. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is June 21st. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, 80. That's pretty warm. Uh, but the Father's Day weekend wasn't too bad. Did you have a good Father's Day? I did. Thank you. And thanks to everybody who sent messages and happy belated Father's Day to uh, you at home. Yes, and also belated Father's Day yep. to Mike as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, my dear. And uh, yeah, it was it was very nice yesterday. A lot of folks uh, took some pictures. I'm going to show you, you know, they had the, the big ring around the sun uh, yes. yesterday with the kind of the ice crystals up there. But uh, this morning, though, the big story, a lot going on is the heat, the heat and the humidity, and that's going to be a problem later on today. We do have some heat advisories in effect. First of all, we've got a couple of showers that have popped up uh, well off in some of our eastern counties. You may see uh, one or two around Gonzales, perhaps as far west as Seguin. There may be a couple little sprinkles left in there, but most of those are off to the east, and they'll be uh, hanging around here just all in the humidity getting kind of pumped on in here. Uh, 81 degrees right now, 84 in Stinson. The normal low temperature average is 73, so we're about 10 degrees above normal. Then you factor in these numbers, and they have really, really shot up. They're basically what they were. Remember a couple of weeks ago when, especially in the afternoon, the humidity stayed so high, and in the morning we had these dew points well up in the mid upper 70s. That's about where it is right now. Dew point is 78 at Stinson. It feels like it's in the 90s still. It feels like 87 out there at the airport. Canyon Lake 88 right now is what it feels like. And like I said, there is a uh, heat advisory. In effect, mold is on the moderate side and the heat advisory goes through eight o'clock tonight and then down in our southern counties. That's an excessive heat warning and that does include LaSalle, McMullen, as well as Live Oak counties. You just have to really take it easy. It's going to be feeling like about 105 to 108, even as we go into the late afternoon and the early evening hours. 96 for a high temperature. Now, we also have a chance for a couple of thunderstorms later on tonight. There is a late season cool front moving on through here, and that's going to touch a few of those off. It's looking like most of those will wait until after the river parade tonight. We'll still be on the lookout for it. Then we get a slight break in the humidity. Doesn't last very long, though. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on, sir? Hey, thanks so much, Mike. Well, we do have a few issues that are already happening here in our roadways. Our friends at TransGuide got us this view at I-10 East at Loop 410. Take a look right over here. We have a major crash that's being reported. You can see that there's a few emergency lights. Uh, now, this is the best view that we can get right now, but you can see that we do have our emergency crews that are out there right now working to clear that scene. Let's take a look on our maps and see how that's impacting uh, traffic right now. Uh, this is happening here at I-10 eastbound right at Houston Street on the east side of town right near 410. So uh, we don't see it causing any issues at this time, but it is still very early on. But this is something that we'll be watching closely, uh, but it's not the only thing we have happening right now. We do have another crash that's being reported that's actually already causing a little bit of issues here on I-35 southbound right at South Alamo. Now we have been watching this one here and you can see that traffic is continuing to build in that direction. So take it easy if you're going to be heading out the door in the next few moments. We'll be watching Watching that one closely as well. Now, if you are coming into the downtown San Antonio area from any of these locations, things are still looking pretty good right now. We're looking at 17 minutes coming in from 35 from Lytle. And if you are coming in from Highway 90 from Castorville, we're looking at 19 minutes. And if you are coming in from Bernie on I-10, we got 25 minutes for you. What I'm going to do here is flip this uh, camera over to the view at 35 at Cesar Chavez, where we had that previous crash. It's still being reported out there. Hard to see where it's at, but you can see we do have some emergency lights out there at the this time we'll be watching these crashes closely and see how that may impact your morning commute. Mark Stephanie. New this morning, San Antonio police say one person is dead following a shooting overnight. Happened around 10 p.m. in the 800 block of Pleasant Park. That's on the west side, just south of Highway 151. Right now, information is limited, but we know one man was shot and killed, or rather one man shot and killed another man. Police tell us the shooter took off. However, investigators say they know who he is. The victim was taken to a hospital where he later died. A man is facing a capital murder charge after admitting to police he shot a woman in front of her two children on the west side. 35-year-old Dylan Meckel is now in custody. His bond is set at $750,000. <coughs> the shooting happened at a Motel 6 not far from Moorsbach and Babcock Road. 
When officials got to the scene, they performed life saving measures on the woman, but could not save her. She was pronounced dead at the scene. San Antonio police say the children who witnessed the shooting were ages four and six. They were not hurt. CPS is arranging care for them. Bear with us as we deal with some microphone issues this morning. There are new concerns about the Delta variant of the coronavirus as life in some of the hardest hit areas returns to normal. Some health experts say the variant now accounts for one in 10 of new COVID cases here in the U.S. ABC's Ika Jachi joins us from Washington with the latest. This morning, parts of the country are returning to pre-pandemic activities. The Foo Fighters playing a sold-out concert at New York's Madison Square Garden Sunday. No social distancing, no masks. Part of the admission, proof of vaccination. And in L.A., the Galaxy professional soccer team playing in front of a packed house, 23,000 fans for the first time in a year. A stark difference to parts of the country under-vaccinated. Frontline workers say COVID is attacking those who aren't getting the shot. The patients I'm seeing now are either young people who never believed they would get sick, young pregnant women who were afraid of the vaccine, and now they're having symptoms, hypoxia, and their babies are in danger. The CDC estimating pregnant women were less than half as likely to be fully vaccinated than non-pregnant women as of early May. Health experts say vaccine hesitancy is to blame. Take a look at this map. The darker regions show where vaccination rates are lowest, highlighting much of the South and even parts of the West. I think the summertime is when we could see the emergence of two COVID nations. That's the big worry that um, we'll see this big disparity between North and South. Another growing issue, the Delta variant. Health officials say it's now detected in nearly every state, threatening communities that have low vaccination rates. The CDC estimating it already accounts for 10% of new cases in the U.S. and will become the dominant strain in the coming months. Just like last summer when we saw a surge in the South, I think we could see that again because such a low percentage of the population is immunized at this point. And this morning, the Department of Homeland Security extending its non-essential travel ban to Canada and Mexico. That ban applies to land and ferry crossings and goes through July 21st. Aika Jachi, ABC News, Washington. The Tokyo Olympics will now allow some local fans to attend when the games open in just over a month. Organizers have set a limit of up to 50% of capacity, up to a maximum of 10,000 fans for all Olympic venues. The decision was announced after so-called five-party talks with local organizers, the International Olympic Committee, and other entities. The decision contradicts the country's top medical advisor, who recommended last week that the safest way to hold the Olympics would be without fans. The Tokyo Games are set to open on July 23rd. In other news this morning, Tropical Depression Claudette regaining strength and expected to return to tropical storm status as it nears the coast of North and South Carolina. The storm is already blamed for 13 deaths in Alabama. A multi-vehicle crash killed eight children riding in a van for a youth home for abused or neglected children. The wreck also claimed the lives of a Tennessee man and his infant daughter. Separately, a tree fell on a home, killing an adult and toddler, and a woman whose car ran off a road went into a swollen creek. She died in northern Alabama. President Joe Biden, special envoy for North Korea, says he hopes to see a positive reaction from the North soon on U.S. offers for talks. That's after North Korean leader Kim Jong-un ordered officials to prepare for both dialogue and confrontation. Biden's special representative for North Korea is in Seoul to speak with South Korean and Japanese officials about the U.S. stalled diplomacy with the North over its nuclear program and U.S.-led sanctions. The trilateral talks to follow a North Korean political conference last week were Kim Jong-un called for stronger efforts to improve his nation's economy. Back here in San Antonio, after more than a year, people this weekend got to enjoy the classic fiesta event, a day in old Mexico and Chariada. Take a look. It was a decent turnout with the crowd enjoying displays of traditional Mexican horsemanship events put on by the Charo Association of San Antonio aimed at preserving centuries old traditions. And as you know, the fun doesn't stop there. There will be a week of full events starting with the Texas Cavaliers River Parade tonight. That is 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And the big event most people are waiting for, start of Niosa. That is a night in old San Antonio. Plus, the carnival opens every night at the Alamo Dome. For a complete list of events or more details on these events, you can head to our website at kz.com. We hope you got to see the porch parade Friday night. It was fun to yeah, it was a lot of fun. see everything come together. And congrats to all the winners. Yes. Yeah. 439 as we get busy on your first 
Monday of summer. It is about 80 degrees out there. Lots of baseball action this week from the Texas Longhorns to the San Antonio Missions. The morning sports next. Outside with live cam. Yeah, Mike has mentioned a chance at a shower or storm. I just want to make sure everybody's got the bases covered there because we do have the big river parade tonight here in downtown San Antonio. More to come in his forecast, and we're going to uh, also take a detour and check in with Stephen. Time for a look at morning sports. Texas Longhorns in Omaha for their first College World Series game against Mississippi State yesterday. It was a tough game for the Horns. Bulldogs pitcher struck out 15 of 20 Longhorns batters. That's a Mississippi State school record. Longhorns struck out 21 times this game, but they still had a chance to win down 2 0. Bottom of the Mike, Mike Antico drills one deep to right, and that's gone. A solo shot makes it a one run game. There's just a bunch of our strikeouts right there. And a few batters later, Texas has runners on the corners, but a ground out to second ends the game. Longhorns fall 2-1. They'll play Tennessee in an elimination game tomorrow at 1 p.m. All right, check it on the San Antonio Missions. Offense struggled to score runs in the final game of the series with Northwest Arkansas. Naturals continuously put runs on the board. Missions lose 8-2. The series ends in a 3-3 split. The missions are now 23 and 19 on the season. Next up, they're back on the road all this week, Tuesday through Sunday, up against the Frisco Rough Riders. Good luck to them. Sorry about your Longhorns. I know. And your microphone's having issues again. Again? Yes. <laughs> it's because I'm sad. Yeah. 444, about 80 degrees up next. So look at some of the biggest deals you'll see on today on Amazon's Prime Day. And welcome back. Lots of big deals are expected today for Amazon Prime's day. ABC's Janae Noren takes a look at some of the biggest ones at today's GMA's first look. In this morning's GMA first look, let the battle of the summer sales begin. This kind of savings event, I would say, has become on par almost with Black Friday or Cyber Mondays. Overnight, Amazon kicking off its two-day Prime Day event, but more retailers than ever are getting in on the action, from Target and Walmart to Home Depot and Old Navy. It is game time, and the retailers are coming in in swarms to get in on the action. And this year, the pandemic bringing big deals in the kitchen. People have been home and they've been cooking for themselves. There's going to be um, quite a few really high-end cookware things up for grabs. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have your hour-by-hour -hour Prime Day game plan to help you score the biggest savings. We'll tell you which deals you should take and which deals you should skip. With your GMA First Look, I'm Janae Norman, ABC News, New York. I have a bunch of stuff in my Amazon cart, including five new books. And oh. I, I waited to see if they would go down what for Prime Day. Did they? they didn't no. Go down, no. Ah. They're still discounted, you know, compared mm -hmm. to retail stores, but. Still uh, have them on hold. I think they're on to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they know that you're, it's in your cart. <laughs> they do know. Oh, trust me, they know. <laughs> Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. It's been a busy morning so far. You know, and I just don't have the patience to wait for anything, so I have to go buy it in person. Yeah? Yeah, that's just me. The if preference. you can. If you can. Yeah. But you know what? We are watching a few things here on our roadways right now. This is a major crash that Texas is reporting right here off 35 at Alamo. You can see this is the left interchange ramp there. Uh, we have spotted a few people that are actually out there that could be some of our first responders, but we want to be very cautious if we're heading in this direction because this crash was reported overnight and it's been there for quite a while. Uh, our friends at Trans Guide working to get us the best view there right now, but you can see that it is still very much an active scene. Now, taking you here to the map, we do see that this is again here at I-35 southbound at South Alamo. A little bit of a congestion in this area, but nothing too major right now. It is still very early on, so thankfully we're not seeing anything major right now. But again, we'll be watching this guy pretty closely here as the morning does pick up. Something that does, has improved since we last talked to you guys, I-10 eastbound a crash at Houston Street. Uh, this one has since cleared. Uh, you can see it wasn't really impacting traffic that much. It looked like quite the busy scene a few minutes ago, but looks like that our first responders got that cleared right away. And taking a look at the wider scope here, around the city and our outlying areas. Things are looking pretty good right now on the 1604 and 410. You can see no major delays right now. The big thing that we are going to be watching, guys, is going to be this crash. It's been there for a little over an hour now, but you can see that we do have our first responders out there, so give them plenty of room to get this scene cleared. Thank you, Steve. And Mike, what was the best thing about Father's Day for you? 
Uh, when we all got together for uh, kind of a mid afternoon lunch, I mean, boy, trying to the lines waiting to get into places yeah. and everything. You know, yeah, the, folks were the lines were were crazy yesterday. The wait times at restaurants. We went and got barbecue. Took half go? an hour oh, really? just to pick up barbecue. Yesterday. Actually, that's not that bad considering some mm. other places. That's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, the four of us were all together and Good. A picture of me and my the two little ones that are now like you know way <laughs> taller than you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, it's like I'm. Just the old man in the middle. So oh, here we go. Uh, it was a it was a nice day yesterday, and this is what I was talking about right off the top of the show. A lot of people were uh, mentioning this that beautiful ring around the sun. Called, I've heard them called sun dogs, and it's because it's like a little rainbow. It's because a loft in the atmosphere above some of these clouds is a layer of ice crystals. A lot of times you can't even see them, but they act like little prisms, and it's basically the same thing that happens uh, when it rains and the sun pops out, and you get a rainbow. So they act like uh, again a little prism and they form that perfect ring around the sun. A lot of folks took that picture. So yeah, a little halo around the sun. It was very beautiful yesterday. This morning, this picture, it almost looks kind of hazy out there and that humidity is just thick as peanut butter. And we do have a couple of showers off to the east, just a few of them that have popped up around Victoria. Everything's sliding off to the north right now. Don't be surprised if there is a lightning uh, strike here and there, clap of thunder, but most of these are just on the light side. Everything's sliding up to the north. Heat. That's the biggest problem. The heat advisories, the humidity today is going to be sticking around and it's going to be definitely on the serious side with just about everybody in the 105 to 110 range. 115 is the forecast heat advisor or heat index down there around Laredo. When it gets above 105, you definitely feel it. And that's why the heat advisory is in effect through eight o'clock tonight. So the river parade starts just after dinner time and a lot of folks are going to be down there. Lots and lots of water just kind of prehydrate for it if you are heading out or doing anything today because it is just going to be oppressively hot and humid. And then the uh, excessive heat warning down here to the south, Live Oak, uh, LaSalle and McMullen counties. Just take it easy today. Now, as far as rain chances, uh, we've got those few showers off to the east. Then we'll get sort of a break in the action. There is a very unseasonable late cool front that's going to be sliding on through here later on tonight. The majority of computer models do have this waiting until later on. So it would be after the parade time. Some of those showers, a couple of those thunderstorms, those would be in the overnight hours and then a few leftovers early tomorrow morning. There's one model that has things kind of rushing along. Not really buying into that right now. Obviously, it's something we're going to be watching throughout the rest of the day as far as the timing of this. But as of right now, everything's going to be later on tonight. So the parade shouldn't uh, be in jeopardy at all. 90 today at noon. We'll call it mostly sunny skies. Um, it's still going to be uh, out there. You know, a lot of clouds out there. Partly cloudy skies. A few storms are going to try and pop up up to the north and we'll be up in the mid 90s. Then we go into the next few days. We get a break in the action. Tomorrow, a uh, little bit lower humidity and lower temperatures in the morning. That's not going to last long at all because the heat will definitely return. <laughs> it's going to feel like summer and maybe a couple of more showers by Sunday around here. It's going to feel like summer because it is the official first day of summer. It began <laughs> last night late. Yeah. Uh, and hey, the day is going to be getting shorter. Right. Yeah. The sun starts going the other way. It's just going to take. Long. It feels like six months. Too yeah. long, yes. yes. But we've been preparing for it. We had some warm temperatures last week. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. But Getting yeah. just, just watch it today, seriously, with the heat advisory out there. Yes, Thank sir. You. We will. Thank you. 453, about 80 degrees. You're watching GMSA. And coming up next, it was a big Father's Day weekend for the box office. Plus, the Foo Fighters helped bring more music crowds back to Madison Square Garden. It was a big weekend at the movies for Father's Day. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. I promised my therapist no bodyguarding. It's a number one debut for the hitman's wife's bodyguard. The action comedy sequel earned $11.6 million over the weekend at what it's made since its Wednesday opening, and you've got a $17 million pal. There are people out there. That knocks A Quiet Place Part 2 back into second place. Another 9.4 million bucks there. They'd better enjoy the wins while they can. Let's get to work. F9 will likely suck all of the air out of the room when it opens next weekend. 
Godzilla. Godzilla vs. Kong just crossed the $100 million domestic earnings threshold 12 weeks after opening. That makes it the second movie this year to hit that mark. A Quiet Place Part 2 was the first and did it in just 15 days. Foo Fighters played to a sold-out, vaccinated-only crowd Sunday night at New York City's Madison Square Garden. The first full-capacity arena show at that venue since the pandemic began. And actor Chris Pratt turns 42 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. And time now is 457 and 80 degrees already. Still ahead on GMSA, a tropical system caused some problems over the weekend has moved through the deep south, spawning multiple tornadoes and creating dangerous road conditions. We'll tell you more about where it is going next. Plus, the Airspeeder Flying Race Car has its first unpiloted test flight. We're going to tell you the test results ahead in Tech Bites. Ahead on GMSA at 6 this morning, a Houston man accused of killing his girlfriend and her mother. We have details on that case. And taking a look out with TransGuide this morning, there are the problems there at I-35 at Alamo. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos again after the break. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A man is stabbed multiple times over on the city's west side overnight. The latest from SAPD is just ahead. Plus, tropical depression Claudette is taking aim at the southeast with heavy rain and flash flooding expected from Florida through the Carolinas. That's turned out to be a pretty big deal. And back here at home outside with live cam, first full day of summer 2021. And Mike says there is an outside chance at a shower or storm. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, June 21st. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. And yeah, you can tell it's going to be a hot one when we're starting off at 80 already. Wasn't used to that. That's true. <laughs> so now we're on the lookout for temperatures that are creeping closer to 100. It is that time of year. Mike, where are we at going into this week? Well, it's just going to be ridiculously hot and humid today and definitely on the serious side. It's kind of uh, dangerous later on this afternoon just because of those high heat index readings and we do have some heat advisories in effect. So yeah, that's as far as we've dropped down thus far 80 degrees. That dew point that number on the bottom there, which we were doing OK last week with those numbers, say in the mid 60s, the dew points. Now we're back up into the mid 70s, so it is just thick with humidity. We're going to make it up to 90 percent or 96 later on this afternoon. Sorry about that. And then uh, we do have that chance for some rain later on tonight. It's going to be, I think, later tonight after the uh, the parade. So I don't think really that is in jeopardy. The aquifer yesterday did go down a half a foot. The allergens, we do have a moderate amount of mold and pigweed is on the light side. Got a couple of showers that are showing up in some of our eastern counties right now. Everything's kind of sliding up to the north. Just one or two of those uh, showers out there. Uh, maybe a little speck of a, a moderate downpour here and there. Haven't seen any lightning strikes with that. That's going to be just this morning. Now, as far as the rain later on tonight, that's because of a front which is going to be moving down here from the north. More on that in a couple of minutes. 85 is what it feels like right now here in town. 87 Port SA and low 90s still at Stinson with that very high humidity. Like I said, mold and pigweed. Mold is on the moderate side today. We do have a heat advisory in effect up until 8 o'clock. So even if, if you are heading out this evening to the River Parade, we're still going to have those heat index readings well up into the hundreds as that gets going and into mid-evening. And then the excessive heat warning down to the south, including LaSalle, McMullen, as well as Live Oak counties. And there's also the chance, like I said, for some showers and thunderstorms tonight. And the basically northwestern half, or northern half of our viewing area, is under the marginal risk for one of those two of those storms to become strong or potentially severe. But again, everything most indications are that's going to be later on tonight and getting in towards say midnight and the wee hours of tomorrow morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the, throughout the day today, warm and humid. A couple of showers off to the east this morning. Heat index about 105 to 110 later on this afternoon. Again, with that heat advisory, a couple of storms later on tonight into the wee hours of tomorrow morning. Slight break tomorrow. Then it is going to be hot and it is going to be humid as we finish out the first full week of summer. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's the latest, sir? Hey, thanks so much, Mike. Well, we still have this major crash that Texas has reported here off 35 at Alamo. You can see that we do have 
first responders that are still out there in the area. And we can tell you that this looks like it's in the left interchange ramp there, and we do have our first responders that are out there right now. Again, this is a major crash has been reported overnight, and we are watching this closely and seeing how that is building as the morning continues. Just a little bit of congestion right here, and again, nothing too bad right now, but we it is still very early on. So as people are getting out the door in the next few minutes, this could cause a lot of delays for our early morning commuters because again, that's uh, it looks like it may be an ongoing investigation throughout the morning. But overall, if you are coming into the downtown San Antonio area from any of these locations, things are still looking pretty good. Uh, let's take a look over here at 281 coming in from Bolverde. We have about a 26 minute commute time, and if you are coming in from New Braunfels on 35, we have 26 minutes and coming in from I 10 from Seguin. We got about 30 minutes for you right now, so nothing too bad right now, but we are watching this crash very closely. In fact, our Katrina Weber is live on the ground there now and has more on what appears to be an ongoing investigation. Well, good morning. It is one involving the Bear County Sheriff's Office and also UTSA police. It has this ramp to 35 South at Guadalupe shut down. Uh, up on the ramp is where that investigation is going on. Now, from what we've been told by the Bear County Sheriff's Office, there was an unmarked vehicle uh, going to a call on 35 on that on-ramp when it was hit by a car that was actually being chased by UTSA police. Now, poli uh, they tell us that the man who was driving that car got out after the crash, jumped off the bridge and broke his arm. Uh, he was taken to a hospital, as was the undercover deputy in that unmarked car. Uh, so this is closed off. It could be a situation throughout the morning. It has been since about 2 o'clock this morning. Uh, that is the situation here. The on-ramp closed. 35 at Guadalupe heading south as they continue to investigate this crash from overnight. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is recovering after he is attacked by two men and stabbed several times. It happened just before midnight in the 800 block of Saraval near Driftwood, just north of Highway 90. San Antonio police say the man in his 50s was involved in some sort of disturbance with two men when he was stabbed in the torso. Police say the two suspects ran away and they are still working to track them down. The victim was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Other top stories this morning, Claudette continues to create dangerous conditions out east. The storm is being blamed for causing a pileup that killed 10 people. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. Breaking overnight, a tornado touching down just outside of Chicago. All units coming into this area, we've got uh, major damage. The twister reportedly collapsing buildings and knocking down trees and power lines, roads blocked by debris with ambulances unable to get by. This says Tropical Depression Claudette takes aim at the southeast. Heavy rain and flash flooding are expected from Florida up through the Carolinas and a tropical storm warning posted overnight for most of North Carolina's coast. Claudette wreaking havoc over the weekend as it moved through the south spawning multiple tornadoes. At least 50 homes damaged or destroyed in this neighborhood in Bruton, Alabama. Angela Spears says a tornado sucked her out of her mobile home. Next thing I know, the walls came falling out and I went flying out the door. Authorities saying hydroplaning is likely what caused this 18 vehicle pile up near Montgomery on Saturday. 10 people losing their lives, nine of them children. Authorities identifying two of the victims, 29 year old Cody Fox and his nine month old daughter, Ariana. Also killed eight children who were riding in a van from the Tallapoosa County Girls Ranch, a home for abused and neglected girls. Michael Smith, the CEO of the Alabama Sheriff's Youth Ranches, had just visited the girls in Gulf Shores during their beach vacation. They all wrote me little sticky notes and <clears throat> Oh, put these sticky notes over my office saying how they look forward to me being down there and, and being together. They were on their way back when the van crashed. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Here at home, the mother of a young father who was shot and killed during a large ranch party last Sunday says she forgives that shooter, but wants that person to come forward. 23-year-old Stephen Henderson was at a party in the 10,000 block of State Highway South when gunshots rang out, hitting and killing him. His mother says Henderson was a loving man, a great father of two, with one on the way and her only son. I know that he's here with me. He'll always be here with me. He'll be here with his children also. 
cherish every moment you have with your children because a bullet has no name on it. The family is planning a balloon release where Henderson was killed this Friday at 7.30 p.m. San Antonio police and crime stoppers asking for your help identifying the person responsible. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. Time check 509, about 80 degrees. It's prime day for all the Amazon fans out there. We're going to get a first look at some of the big deals just ahead. Many have invested in some Amazon products that include a ring or echo device. Up next, we'll explain why you may now be sharing your network with your neighbors and how you can opt out. And Mark's Amazon cart, none of those things are on sale. Sorry. Well, I bet, I bet those devices are. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep looking around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Taking a look at live cam out there. It's 80 degrees. It's going to be a hot one. We'll be right back. Amazon just expanded its sidewalk network, and if you have an Amazon Echo or Ring, chances are you're part of Amazon Sidewalk. Max Massey explains this change and how you can opt out if you want to. The aim of Sidewalk is to take a little piece of your internet bandwidth from these devices to create a neighborhood network so you'll be providing internet access to anyone's Sidewalk devices in range of your Ring cameras or Echo speakers. If you don't want to share your internet access with others, there is a way to opt out. CNET recently lists the steps that you need to take to turn off Amazon Sidewalk on your Echo or your Ring. First, open the Alexa app on your phone, then tap more in the lower right hand corner of the app. After that, tap settings, then tap account settings. Next, you'll want to tap Amazon Sidewalk and finally, switch sidewalk off, then exit the app. This is simple and it can be easily reversed, but opting out will give you a chance to see how the latest expansion of sidewalk unfolds and whether or not there are any privacy issues. For more on Amazon Sidewalk, just check out Amazon's support website. Guys, back to you. 514, still about 80 degrees. And still ahead, what you can expect to find deal-wise during Amazon's Prime Day. Did you know the source of odor in your home could be all your soft surfaces? Odors get trapped in your home's fabrics and resurface over time. Febreze Fabric Refresher eliminates odors. Its water-based formula safely penetrates fabrics where odors hide. Spray it on your rugs, your curtains, your furniture, all over your home to make it part of your tidying up routine. Febreze Fabric Refresher, for an all-over freshness you'll love. All the serums out there? This is the number one in America. Revitalift Hyaluronic Acid Serum from L'Oreal. It seriously hydrates to visibly replump skin and reduces wrinkles. Effective for all skin tones. Revitalift Hyaluronic Acid Serum from L'Oreal Paris. In today's Tech Bytes, Prime Day isn't just for Amazon anymore. The retail giant has more than 2 million items on sale, but Walmart, Target, Best Buy, and others are joining in on the discount wars. Consumers can find tech and other items for as much as 50% off. Next, some stunning progress for the Chinese company behind TikTok. An internal memo says ByteDance saw its earnings double last year. Another figure highlights TikTok's popularity. The company says TikTok had nearly $2 billion monthly active users by the end of 2020. And finally, they're calling it the future of racing. A company called Airspeeder conducted its first unpiloted test of an electric flying race car. The flight was remote controlled and took place in Australia. Airspeeder is hoping to hold Grand Prix races this year. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Yeah, that commute on Loop 410 is about to get crazy with those things. Uh, oh, yeah, that, that would be terrible. <laughs> we won't see that. Let's check on traffic yeah. right now with normal cars. And normal cars, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think of the fifth element with the flying cars. Can you imagine oh, doing no, traffic like that? No. That's crazy. It's coming one day. You know what? But right now we do have a crazy scene that's happening out here at 35 at Alamo. You can see the view from Transguide. Uh, not much of a scene right now, this view, but we do have a crash that was reported there overnight around 2 a.m. Our Katrina Weber was out there in the area. She's still there on the ground in which she was reporting that this was a major crash that involved a BCSO deputy being injured. She's going to have a full report later this morning on GMSA, but just take a look right here. This uh, is on the left interchange 
change ramp there, and this could be a problem for drivers later this morning as they get out the door for their morning commute. Uh, right now, though, taking a look here at the map, this is reported at I-35 southbound at South Alamo, not far from Guadalupe Street, uh, not causing any real issues right now, but this could be a mess of problems for drivers as they head into or head out of the San Antonio area. So this is what we'll be watching closely throughout the morning. Katrina Weber will have that full report. And if one of the places you're heading to is the gas station, well, let's take a look at these gas prices here from AAA. Uh, 265 right now from Bear County and around the state. We're looking at 274 around the country at 307. And I'll have you know, I am already fueled up, so I do not have to stop by the gas station. Yay. Yes, yes, but prepared we are for so Monday. Mr. Planner progress. All right, got to plan ahead. Why Good are job. we applauding somebody just for getting gas? Because well, I, I was yes. always on E. <laughs> it's a great way to start the week. Yeah. It's a great yeah. way to start the week. It's great to be prepared. Yes, <laughs> hey, Mike. Ahead. I would have applauded you had you gotten donuts when you got gas. Oh, oh yeah, then that would have been extra that, applause. There's next still stop. four days left in the week to make that happen. Mike, you know That's how right. I know summer started yesterday? <laughs> hmm. That annoying, pulsating chirp of the cicadas oh. seemed to start <laughs> right on time late yesterday afternoon. Yes, indeed. You know, in the morning, it was fairly pleasant, but you could feel the humidity kind of come back throughout the day, and boy, it is just, I mean, thicker than thick out there this morning. A gorgeous Father's Day sunset, though. It was a really, really nice day, and now we're starting off. When you step outside this morning, just get ready because it is going to slap you in the face, all the humidity. We've got a couple of showers well off to the east this morning. There were a few around, uh, say, Gonzales. Notice how those are kind of fizzling out and still some down around Victoria sliding up to the north in toward uh, just to the east of Hallettsville. A couple of decent downpours associated with that as well. That's going to be it for this morning. Then we have the next chance of rain, but doesn't look like until that's going to be later on tonight. Heat index readings again today are going to be at the dangerous levels, well above 105 in most areas. And and then above 110 down to the southwest. So that's why we've got the heat advisory, the orange area till 8 o'clock. Excessive heat warning for our southern counties all the way down to the south Laredo, Catula. And this goes over toward Live Oak County. Uh, this is in effect until 7 o'clock. Again, it is going to be a dangerous situation out there because get above 105 for the apparent temperature and your body just does not cool itself all that well. So you really have to take it easy. And that's especially for folks if you're going to be heading down to the River Parade tonight because that heat advisor will still have heat index readings well up into the hundreds, even going into the early evening hours. So you really want to hydrate and hydrate and hydrate again. So today we'll have partly cloudy skies and then tonight. Now notice how I mean this model has like one or two showers scattered about the area this evening, eight o'clock, but this model and this is how a lot of them are handling this situation. There is a front moving through, but it won't be until later on tonight. So all the rain gets held off until the wee hours late, late tonight, early, early tomorrow morning. And then we clear on out and actually get a little bit of a break tomorrow from the heat and humidity, but it's going to come right back in here as we go into the rest of the week. There's also the chance later on tonight for some of those storms to be on the uh, strong, potentially severe side. It would be high winds and hail as the biggest threat. So today Today. I'm going to call it mostly sunny skies. We'll have some of those clouds left over and still extremely humid at noon, already up to 90. We get up to 96 for a high temperature today, but it will feel like 105 to 110 here in town. Hotter than that down to the south and southwest in the heat advisory and those excessive heat warnings down to the south are in effect throughout the rest of the afternoon. A few storms then later on tonight early, early tomorrow morning. Then we'll be up to 90 tomorrow. Not a bad day tomorrow, actually. We get a little bit of a break from the heat and humidity, but it's going to come right back in here. We're looking at mid to upper 90s the rest of the week. Hopefully a couple of more showers uh, coming in here by later on in the weekend. We so. Yeah, but again, heat is going to be a big problem tonight. Thank you, Mike. 523, about 80 degrees. Up next to your morning spotlight, why the latest Hotel Transylvania movie is getting delayed, plus a first look at what is expected to be on Taylor Swift's re-recorded Red album. A new animated kids film is getting pushed back, plus the latest on Taylor Swift, her next re-recorded album. Here's CNN David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. God, queens are everywhere now. Can we turn that off? That wasn't even an appetizer of what I have to deal with day in and day out. Well, that's because you were in everybody's face about it. I wonder where I got that one from. Here's your first look at Mark Wahlberg in Joe Bell as a father who honors his gay teenage son, played by Reed Miller, by walking across the U.S. to crusade against bullying. Joe Bell arrives in theaters July 23rd. You're human and I'm a monster. 
It's like Freaky Friday, but on a Tuesday, though. Yeah! Hotel Transylvania fans will have to wait a bit longer for the next film in that franchise. Sony has pushed back Hotel Transylvania Transformania from its scheduled release date of July 23rd to October 1st. Taylor Swift fans are playing a guessing game. The superstar says the next re-recorded album she'll release will be 2012's Red, and that fans will hear all 30 songs that were meant to go on the album. The original had 16 tracks, so what else is in store? We'll find out when Red, Taylor's version, arrives November 19th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And time now is 527, and it's about 80 degrees out there. July 4th, less than two weeks away. We'll have a closer look at why President Biden's goal of getting 70% of adults at least partially vaccinated is in doubt. Plus, American Airlines being forced to cancel hundreds of flights through at least mid-July. We're going to tell you why and what to do if your flight is affected. And cruises one step closer to sailing again. How one cruise line is making sure everyone aboard their ships stays healthy. The Great Outdoors of Texas, they're calling ahead on GMSA at 6. Details on the Great Outdoors scavenger hunt that sends you all over the state to see some of the best spots in Texas. Making headlines this morning, President Biden wants 70 percent of U.S. adults at least partially vaccinated by Independence Day. Why it may be tougher than first thought to meet that goal. Taking a look outside with live cam, you know it's summertime when we're starting off at 80 degrees. It's going to be another hot one. Summer began last night around 1030. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, June 21st. Thanks for joining us. Happy Monday and prepare for the heat, especially if you're headed for the festivities uh, downtown. Uh, but Mike says a uh, note, little asterisk on his forecast going into this evening, right, Mike? Well, that I think that's going to be later on tonight. Uh, okay. Most everything. We'll still be on the look. I was talking about uh, some rain chances. There's actually a front moving through late tonight, but most all the indications are that it will be after all of the uh, river parade festivities. But yeah, the biggest thing we're gonna have to watch out for is the heat. You know, you're talking about how summer began at 1030 last night and it didn't all have to get dumped on us at once because you step outside and you're just gonna wanna turn around and go back inside this morning. 80 right now, the dew point is up to 75. That is definitely wet towel, wall of humidity, however you want to describe it. And that's what it feels like, and that's what it's going to feel like. We're not going to see really any break from the humidity throughout the day. We've got a couple of showers in some of our eastern counties, a few uh, right here just to the west of Cuero, starting to slide up to the north, but most everything is further off to the east, and everything is moving up straight up to the north. So it'll just be confined well off to the east this morning. Heat index right now, 85 degrees, 93 Stinson, 96 at Randolph. That's what it feels like right now when you step outside. Molds on the moderate side, pigweed is light. Later on today, we do have a heat advisory that goes into effect for basically all of the area with uh, the exception of portions of the hill country. Still gonna be hot out there. And then that uh, kind of reddish pinkish area down to the south, that's the excessive heat warning for some of our southern counties where the heat index readings later on today will be well over 110, about 105 to 110 here in town. And then late tonight, that chance for a couple of strong to potentially severe storms. And again, I think that's gonna be later on tonight 90 at noon 96 for a high temperature but again it will feel like 105 to 110 so if you are just going to be outside today and going down to the uh, river parade lots and lots of water just be prepared for because it is definitely going to be humid tonight a little bit of a break in the humidity how long will that last? Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic uh, Authority, Stephen Cavazos. What's going on, sir? Hey, thanks, Mike. Well, we still have the situation that's happening out here at 35 at Alamo. Now, while it doesn't look like much from this view, this is a major crash that was reported overnight. You can see that we do have a few vehicles that are out there on 35, but this is the left interchange ramp that is could be closed during that morning rush hour. And what we're learning right now that this is all stemming from a chase that happened overnight. We'll have more on that in just a moment, but take a look right here on the maps of uh, that crash happening here off I-35 southbound at South Elmo, not far from Guadalupe Street right now, not causing much of an issue for our early morning commuters. But again, this is what we'll be watching closely throughout the morning because that could impact that commute as the morning does pick up. But taking a look around, things are relatively quiet for this Monday morning. So thankfully, no big issues to report. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our inbound times while we got this map up here. Let's go ahead and take a look right now. 29 minutes coming in from I-10 and Seguin coming in from 87 from the 
Alvernia, we're looking at 23 minutes. And if you are coming in from Floresville on 37, we are looking at the 28 minute commute time right now. But bringing it back here to Transguide, this is a major crash that again we'll be watching very closely. But our Katrina Weber has the latest on this ongoing investigation. Well, good morning, Stephen. I just talked to a sergeant a few minutes ago, but unfortunately, he was not able to say how long this situation will be going on. He says investigators are now just on their way here to take a look at what happened. But let me show you what's going on here. Well, you can see the back end of a car that's pretty banged up. That was uh, an unmarked car that belongs to the Bear County Sheriff's Office. According to the sergeant, that car was hit by a car that was running from UTSA police. It seems that that driver ran a red light somewhere downtown, nearly hitting that UTSA police officer, and then she lit him up, attempting to stop him, but he continued going down the road, actually getting onto the highway here where he did hit that Bear County Sheriff's Office car. Both of the cars hit the walls on the side of the highway. We understand, uh, we were told that the driver that was running from police got out of his car, trying to keep running, jumped off the bridge, possibly not realizing how high up he was, and that's where he broke several bones. He was taken to the hospital, as was the deputy, but we understand the deputy wasn't seriously hurt. He was taken to the hospital just to get checked out. But again, this investigation still going on. Investigators just getting to the scene to start uh, digging into what exactly what happened here and collecting evidence. So we don't have an estimate on when this on-ramp here at Guadalupe will reopen, but we'll keep you posted as soon as we find out. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. July 4th, less than two weeks away. It's been the day the administration has been eyeing for months now, shooting to get 70% of U.S. adults with at least one shot of a COVID-19 vaccine by then. However, as Britt Conway reports, health experts are more concerned about what happens after July 4th. On July 4, we're going to celebrate our independence from the virus as we celebrate our independence of our nation. Independence from COVID-19, one shot at a time, by getting 70% of adults at least partially vaccinated in less than two weeks. We're at a little more than 65%, close, but at the weekly vaccination rate we're at, getting to 70 is unlikely. In 16 states and D.C., 70% of adults have gotten one dose. That's in dark green. In light green, Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Wyoming are among the slowest to vaccinate. But medical experts are less worried about hitting 70% by the 4th. I think as a practical matter from a public health standpoint, it's not going to have an impact whether we hit 68% or 70%. And more worried about where we go from here. Now we need to think about trying to push out the vaccine into community sites where people could get it delivered to them through a trusted intermediary. That's going to mean doctors, offices, schools, places of employment. Especially as the Delta variant continues to spread. I anticipate that will be the predominant variant in the months ahead. It's already taking its toll in Missouri. We've seen a five-fold increase in uh, hospitalized patients in less than four weeks. Our doctors are describing them as uh, younger, sicker. They're often coming to us later in the disease process, so we have uh, less therapy options for them. Britt Conway, KSAT 12 News. The United States preparing another round of sanctions against Russia, this time over the poisoning and imprisonment of opposition leader Alexei Navalny. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan says the sanctions will come as soon as they determine the right targets. The U.S., along with European allies, issued a number of sanctions on Russia back in March over the treatment of Navalny. The announcement comes after President Biden's summit in Geneva with Russian President Vladimir Putin. The International Space Station is getting a power supply upgrade. On Sunday, astronauts put in the second batch of six solar arrays scheduled to be installed on the space station. The remaining panels will be set up at a later date. The equipment will upgrade power channels to the ISS. Well, as you probably have heard by now, Juneteenth is now officially a federal holiday. And over the weekend, we saw people taking off work and commemorations taking place here in San Antonio and across the country. During this weekend's leading SA interview, Max Massey and Sarah Costa spoke with Assistant City Manager David McCary about the holiday here in the Alamo City and what comes next.
This year's Juneteenth marks the 156th anniversary of Juneteenth, the day enslaved Texans were officially proclaimed free two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863. Here in San Antonio, we have an entire Juneteenth commission. We spoke with David McCary, assistant city manager, about commemoration of the holiday, its special importance here locally, and how the city is working to address certain and current inequalities that we see across our community. Take a listen. One thing I will tell you is that our services and what we're looking to do as far as engagement on a continuous basis is we're listening. We're asking the community, what are the needs? What are you still having challenges with? What are the struggles? Because that equity lens allows us to really step back, have an equity atlas, look at our communities, look at the demographics, look at the success story, and look at what's working and what is still need to be worked on. David McCary was a phenomenal conversation. We talked about a lot. You can see the entire segment right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have our Leading SA segment every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So we'll see you next Sunday. Guys, back to you. And time now is 540 and it's about 80 degrees right now. A major cruise line is running a simulation to test the safety of restarting trips out of the U.S. We'll tell you how it's going so far. Up next, a closer look at why President Biden is now at the center of a debate among Catholic bishops over his stance on abortion rights. Outside with live cam, very, very warm out there. Hydrate early if you're headed down to the Texas Cavaliers River Parade tonight here in downtown San Antonio. More to come. You're watching GMSA. Hi, 43. Welcome back. President Biden is only the second Catholic commander in chief in history. And now he's at the center of a debate among Catholic bishops over his stance on abortion rights. Some are questioning whether the openly devout president should be allowed to receive Holy Communion. Here's ABC Mary Alice Parks. President Biden at his hometown parish, where he attends mass nearly every week. Only the second Catholic president in the nation's history after John F. Kennedy. President Biden even making time for worship while in England during his first foreign trip. Both president and parishioner, his personal faith now the center of a very public and heated debate among American Catholic bishops. Last week during a virtual meeting, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops voting three to one to take steps that could one day allow priests to deny public figures like President Biden the sacrament of communion over their support of abortion rights. We've never had a situation like this where the executive is a, a Catholic president who is opposed to, uh, to the teaching of the church. The Vatican warning American bishops against the move. Pope Francis has publicly focused much more on issues of poverty, refugees and equality. 60 Catholic Democrats on Capitol Hill rushing to President Biden's defense in a new letter to the bishops, including California Congressman Ted Lieu, who went as far as to call the bishops hypocrites, writing, there are a number of Catholic Republican elected officials who support the death penalty. Are you going to deny communion to them? The bishops are expected to vote on final language this fall. The president asked about their move and what it could mean for him. That's a private matter, and I don't think that's going to happen. Thank you. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, the White House. 544, about 80 degrees. And up next, what you need to know about American Airlines canceling flights and what you need to do to make travel adjustments. In your morning consumer headlines, labor shortages are among the reasons American Airlines are being forced to cancel hundreds of flights through at least mid-July. The airline had 120 cancellations on Saturday alone and is projecting at least 50 to 80 flight cancellations a day going forward. The surge in demand for air travel, unprecedented bad weather, and vendors' challenges trying to return to full employment or other factors. The airline's Dallas-Fort Worth hub is said to be the most affected by the scheduling issues. American Airlines customers who have booked through July 15th will be notified so they can make travel adjustments in advance. Royal Caribbean taking small steps for the cruise industry. On Sunday, Freedom of the Seas embarked from Port of Miami from, for a simulated voyage. Company officials say the two-day jaunt with volunteer passengers will serve as a way to observe a, quote, multi-layered health and safety measures set by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The cruise industry has been shut down for about 15 months or more due to the pandemic. In a statement, Royal Caribbean says this voyage is a major step towards making cruises possible for Americans looking to hit the seas for a vacation.
The Postal Service is out with a new stamp. It's a 55 cent Sun Science Forever stamp. It comes in multiple designs and USPS says all of them highlight stunning images that honor the science behind continued exploration of the sun. They show different views of the sun and a range of solar activity observed by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. It's a spacecraft that was launched in 2010 to constantly monitor the sun. Very pretty. Beautiful, yeah. yeah. 549, let's see what's happening with the morning commute. How's it looking? Stephen Cavazos just looked at Transguide. Looks uh, like there's something there, I-10 and West Avenue. That's right, Mark and Steph. This is a stall that actually just came up in our system at I-10 at West Avenue. You can take a look here. It looks like it's a Via bus that's uh, stalled out right over here. Thankfully, they are receiving some assistance of what it appears to be. Traffic moving nice and smooth. This is I-10 westbound, uh, just past uh, West Avenue. Again, not causing any real issues right now, but just be careful as uh, they're working to get that Via bus out of the way. But something that we have been monitoring closely is this crash right here at 35 at Alamo. You can see that this has been out there throughout the morning right here on GMSA it was reported around two this morning. You can see there in the left interchange ramp. Uh, they've actually uh, placed road flares there as they're working to clear that scene. And what we know right now is that this is all stemming from a crash that sent one BCSO deputy to the hospital. Katrina Weber will have a full report coming up here later this morning on GMSA. But right now, let's take a look at traffic and seeing how that's impacting anything right now. Thankfully, doesn't look that bad at this moment, but it's still unclear how long they're going to be out there. They've been out there for several hours already, so we'll be watching this closely as the morning does pick up. Other than that, it has been relatively quiet here in the Alamo City and around our outlying areas, so nothing too crazy to report right now, and that's a good sign for a Monday morning. But if you are going to be coming in from New Braunfels, perhaps this morning around 9, we do have some lane closures to let you know about. This one, I-35 uh, southbound frontage road. It's going to be happening today from 9 a.m. to 5.30 this afternoon from FM 2252 to FM 11.03. Now, what they're doing is some material haul off there. This is going to be going on until the 26th, so that'll be wrapping up here in the next few days, but it's just starting today, and we, as we know, 35 is a very heavily traveled route, so do be prepared for that lane closure if you're coming into the downtown San Antonio area, but this is the major one that we're watching, guys. 35 at Alamo. Again, Katrina Weber will have a full report later here on GMSA, but looks like it could impact the commute as the morning does continue. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, thank you. And it's glowing behind that tree there, right? <laughs> great picture. Yeah. It's like really, Lion really King. cool looking yesterday in the sunset. Can so. you hear the sizzle in the background? <laughs> yeah. That's on like low broil. And the, and the steam just everywhere this morning mm -hmm. because the humidity is sky high this morning. It's about what it was a couple of weeks ago. And remember a couple of weeks ago in the afternoons when we didn't get rid of the humidity, that's going to be the situation again today. Uh, no problems out there right now. It's just kind of hazy looking off in the distance. We still have these few showers well off to the east, and some of those may stick around for the next couple of hours. A couple of uh, moderate downpours, even a few lightning strikes way off to the northeast of uh, Victoria. Again, can't emphasize enough the heat and later on today, it is going to be up in dangerous levels. 105 and higher, your body doesn't really handle it all that well, cooling itself. And then we're looking at heat index readings again, well about the 115 around Laredo. So we have the excessive heat warning down to the south in that pink area. And then the orange is the heat advisory, and that's in effect through 8 o'clock tonight. So all the way through the afternoon and even into the early evening hours, we will still have those heat index readings about 105. And that's going to be for the start of the, uh, the river parade. Here's a, a a different computer model than I showed earlier, and it's about the same situation. It's got a few of these showers still scattered about off to the east this morning. Then things will settle down later on. And 7 o'clock, start of the parade. Nope. Nothing out there. Maybe a stray shower or two. I mean, it's just going to be hit or miss here or there. No big deal. And that's going to be the situation through most of the evening. There's the line of rain that then starts to form up later on tonight and some of those thunderstorms. And this is going to be well after everything is over tonight. And in the overnight hours, we'll have some of those showers and thunderstorms. And those will be moving on out. Maybe a straggler left over early tomorrow morning. Some of those may be on the strong, potentially severe side with high winds and hail being the biggest threats. And again, that's going to be in the overnight hours. The high is still off to the west of us, and that's why we've got these little disturbances and that kind of a rare late season front moving through here tonight. So we'll get a bit of a break in the uh, temperatures and the humidity tomorrow. Won't last all that long, though. And that will then move in basically on top of us as that slides in here the rest of the week. Then that's going to heat things up with that thing just plunked down right on top of us. And it's going to be very hot 
going into the weekend we might have another chance at some rain by Sunday, late Saturday, Sunday. Um, right now about a 30%, 40% chance for some rain. And then going into next week, we may have a couple of disturbances coming in here to give us some more rain chances. But I'll tell you what, after a slight break in the heat and humidity tomorrow, it's going to temperature is going to shoot right back up. Call it mostly sunny at noon. We'll still have a fair amount of clouds hanging around here. 96 for a high temperature today. Uh, heat index though, 105, 110. That's going to be the biggest issue that we have to worry about. Definitely a dangerous situation later on today. A couple of storms then late tonight, overnight, wee hours of tomorrow morning, 90 tomorrow. It'll be kind of pleasant out there tomorrow with a slight break in the humidity, but then back to the, whoops, jump right past it there. Sorry about that. Back to the mid 90s. And we just don't want to see 98 degrees. <laughs> no, Friday. we don't. I'd rather see the glowing picture. Chance of <laughs> rain by uh, late Saturday, Sunday. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 554, about 80 degrees. Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, five, three, six, fireball five, and then daily four, four, seven, five, one, fireball zero. Your cash five number 7, 8, 11, 21, 30. Lotto, Texas, 10, 12, 43, 44, 50, 52. And Powerball, 4, 22, 35, 38, 39. Powerball, 20, power play, 2. Ahead in our next hour of GMSA, 10 people are dead, nine of them children following a horrific multi-car crash over the weekend. We'll have more details. And the Tokyo Summer Games are just around the corner. Organizers are now saying they will allow some fans to attend. That news just hitting the wires in the last couple of hours. And there have been some traffic delays over near I-35 South, just past Guadalupe. Stephen Cavazos, about some ways you can get around it. Katrina Weber is standing by with a live report from the scene. And speaking of transit guide or traffic, there is I-10 at West Avenue. Quite a few flashing lights and it looks like the flare line is out. Updates coming up at the top of the hour. Health experts are warning of a potential summer surge because of the new Delta variant. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, we'll hear from frontline workers and the new types of patients they're seeing. It's a getaway gone wrong. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. A driver trying to get away from police ends up hitting a deputy. I'll tell you more about it coming up. One man stabbed several times overnight over on the city's west side. We'll have the latest. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, 80 degrees, kind of warm already, and it's going to heat up some more. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. First full day of summer. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, June 21st. Thanks for joining us. Happy Monday, and you can already feel it out there already. We've only dropped down to about 80 degrees or so, but Mike says uh, the heat index is really the big concern going into later this afternoon and this evening. Yeah, that's the big thing we have to watch out for. Heat advisories mm -hmm. are posted for just about all of the area with the exception of uh, parts of the hill country and then especially down to the south, excessive heat warnings. And this morning, boy, yeah, you walk outside and you are going to be greeted by a <laughs> happy first day of summer with all that humidity out there. Not a bad view out at the uh, airport right now. You can see maybe a couple of breaks in the clouds here and there, but yeah, we're still holding at 80. That's all we dropped down to. The normal average low temperature is 73 and nowhere can't get anywhere near that because you can't drop down below that number there. But with the cloud cover and all the humidity, we're probably not going to be dropping down too much, if at all, in the next couple of hours. We're still looking at some of those showers well off to the east. Actually, a couple of thunderstorms have developed. That's pretty much east of our viewing area right now. Um, haven't even seen any mist out there this morning, but there is a little speck of it. Don't be surprised. It feels like 85 in town. It feels like 89 Castroville and low 90s down around Stinson again because of that just ridiculously high humidity out there. Mold is moderate, low amount of pigweed. There's the outlook or outline for the heat advisories. Uh, heat advisory through 8 o'clock, the orange area, and the excessive heat warning. Heat index readings down to the south and southwest are going to be about 115 or so. Again, 105 is where your body doesn't really cool itself all that efficiently. So we definitely have to be careful. And that's in effect. Don't forget, even because if you're planning on heading out this evening to the river parade, the heat advisor will still be in effect at the start of that. So you just have to really take a lot of precautions. Uh, this morning, again, temperatures won't be dropping down all that much. 
We'll make it up to right around 90 today at noon. Still have uh, some clouds left over and call it partly cloudy throughout the day. There is a chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms. Most of that, though, is going to happen later on tonight, so shouldn't have any effect on the, uh, the river parade. High temperature of 96, but add basically about 10 degrees to that, and that's what it will feel like here in town. Believe it or not, there is a very rare cool front that's going to move through tonight. What's that going to do to temperatures, and how long is it going to last? Not as long as you like. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Big problems earlier this morning. What's the latest? Yeah, Mike, it looks like that's the theme of this morning. Some problems out on our roadways right now. This is a view from Transguide at I-10 at West Avenue. Take a look right here. Uh, TxDOT is reporting that a via bus has just stalled out in this area. You can see that the road flares have been set up as they receive some assistance right now, and we're seeing people getting out on the roads here. Uh, view from I-10 at West Avenue, but let's go ahead and jump to our maps and see what that's looking like right now. Still a lot of green on I-10 West Bound at West Avenue where that stall has been reported. So no major issues right now, and that's a good sign. But the big thing that we have continued to watch here on GMSA is this crash over here at 35 at Alamo. You can see that we do have several road flares that have been set up there along the uh, the left interchange there uh, on the ramp. And you can see even over here from the view of Transguide as the, we're getting a little bit later in the morning, we're starting to see that this is a vehicle that's crashed into what looks like the barrier there. So we're actually taking a look at that and watching that very closely. And we've been doing it all morning long. You can see here that crash happened here along I-35 South, I-35 Southbound that is at South Alamo, not far from Guadalupe Street. In fact, our Katrina Weber is actually out there now. And this crash sent one deputy to the hospital. She has the latest. Now that's right, one deputy to the hospital as well as a driver who uh, they tell us started this whole thing. Uh, just within the last half hour, we have seen investigators arrive here at the scene to begin looking into this crash. but. As far as the closure goes, it's been this way since about 2 o'clock and no sign of changing at this point. We have a deputy's um, unmarked car that was hit by someone who they tell us was running from UTSA police. Let me give you a look at the video to show you a little bit of what we saw earlier. Now, according to what we were told by the sheriff's office, uh, the driver was trying to get away from a UTSA police officer who had uh, tried to stop him for running a red light. She said that he nearly hit her as he ran that light. The driver ended up on this on-ramp at Guadalupe to southbound I-35 where he hit the deputy's car. They tell us that after the crash, that driver got out of his own car, jumped off the bridge, still trying to get away, but maybe not realizing just how high up he was. He landed on the ground, breaking several bones. The deputy was uh, taken to the hospital just to be checked out. As, a, as was the driver to uh, get some uh, treatment for his injuries. But again, the situation has been like this ever since that time where they have the shutoff so that they can collect evidence and do what they need to do to investigate this crash. Reporting live from downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, a man's recovering after being stabbed multiple times overnight on the city's west side. Happened just before midnight in the 800 block of Saravo near Driftwood. That's just north of Highway 90. And that's where San Antonio police say the man in his 50s was stabbed several times in the torso by two men. The suspects ran away and are still on the loose. The victim was taken to the hospital in stable condition. A man is facing a capital murder charge after admitting to shooting a woman in front of her two children. Police say 35-year-old Dylan Meckel is now in custody. His bond is set at $750,000. The shooting happened on Saturday at a Motel 6 not far from Warsbach Road and Babcock Road. The 37-year-old woman was pronounced dead at the scene. San Antonio police say the children who witnessed the shooting were ages 4 and 6. They were not hurt. Child Protective Services is now arranging care for them. Now to an investigation underway over in Houston. A man accused of shooting and killing his girlfriend and her mother. Rochelle Turner has more from our sister station KPRC in Houston. Houston police investigating a double shooting this Father's Day. They were called to a home on Trioaks Lane in West Houston about an assault in progress. As the officers arrived to this location, they observed a female get out of her call, uh, out of her car, and walked toward the front of the uh, the residence. She knocked on the door. And at, at that point, the suspect opens the door and immediately shoots point blank at that person. Police say the woman, who was the victim's mother, collapsed, and they ordered the suspect to drop his gun. And at that point, the suspect shoots at the officers, misses the officer, 
and strikes the uh, the police vehicle on the hood and the windshield. Police say the officer shot back at the suspect more than once and he ran back inside the house. He later came out and was rushed to the hospital in stable condition. Officers searched the home and found the suspect's girlfriend dead. KPRC spoke to the suspect's older sister, who says police has been to the home several times in the past. My brother had enough. My brother had enough. That's what happened. My brother had enough. She says her brother had been dealing with a lot. Both of them were doing the same thing, yeah. They were cheating on each other, and it just kind of came to a head today. It did. And that was Rochelle Turner reporting out of KPRC. Nine children and one adult are dead this morning as a result of a multi-car crash in Alabama over the weekend. Local police say eight of the children were in a small bus from a ranch that provides a home for neglected and abused girls. The bus driver was pulled from the burning vehicle, but the girls were not able to be rescued. Their ages ranged from four to 17. A 29-year-old man and his nine-month-old daughter in another vehicle were also killed. Investigators say the crash was probably caused by storms that are currently sweeping the southeastern U.S. Well, there are new concerns this morning about the Delta variant of the coronavirus as life in some of the hardest hit areas returns to normal. Some health experts say the variant now counts for one in 10 of the new COVID cases here in the U.S. ABC's Aika Jachi joins us from Washington with the latest. This morning, parts of the country are returning to pre-pandemic activities. The Foo Fighters playing a sold-out concert at New York's Madison Square Garden Sunday. No social distancing, no masks. Part of the admission, proof of vaccination. And in L.A., the Galaxy professional soccer team playing in front of a packed house, 23,000 fans for the first time in a year. A stark difference to parts of the country under-vaccinated. Frontline workers say COVID is attacking those who aren't getting the shot. The patients I'm seeing now are either young people who never believed they would get sick, young pregnant women who were afraid of the vaccine, and now they're having symptoms, hypoxia, and their babies are in danger. The CDC estimating pregnant women were less than half as likely to be fully vaccinated than non-pregnant women as of early May. Health experts say vaccine hesitancy is to blame. Take a look at this map. The darker regions show where vaccination rates are lowest, highlighting much of the South and even parts of the West. I think the summertime is when we could see the emergence of two COVID nations. That's the big worry that um, we'll see this big disparity between North and South. Another growing issue, the Delta variant. Health officials say it's now detected in nearly every state, threatening communities that have low vaccination rates. The CDC estimating it already accounts for 10% of new cases in the U.S. and will become the dominant strain in the coming months. Just like last summer when we saw a surge in the South, I think we could see that again because such a low percentage of the population is immunized at this point. And this morning, the Department of Homeland Security extending its non-essential travel ban to Canada and Mexico. That ban applies to land and ferry crossings and goes through July 21st. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. It's now 11 minutes past the hour, about 80 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, tough break for Longhorn baseball fans. We're going to have the highlights from their World Series matchup with Mississippi State. Outside with live cam on your Monday morning. Thanks for starting your day with us here on GMSA. Some morning clouds out there. Traffic has been shall we say complicated in a few spots. We'll have an update with Stephen Cavazos coming up. Time for a look at morning sports. Texas Longhorns take on Omaha or takes uh, goes to Omaha for their first college World Series game against Mississippi State. It's a tough game for the Horns. Bulldogs pitchers struck out 15 of 20 Longhorns face. That's a Mississippi State school record. Longhorns struck out 21 times this time this game. Still had a chance to win though, down two nothing. Bottom of the ninth, Mike Antico drills one to deep to right. The solo shot makes it a one run game. A few batters later, Texas has runners on the corners, but a ground out to second ends the game. Longhorns fall 2-1. They will play Tennessee in an elimination game tomorrow at 1 p.m. There's that solo to right. All right, checking in on the San Antonio Missions. Hi, I'm doing sports. San Antonio Missions, the offense struggled to, to score the runs in the final game of the series against Northwest Arkansas. Naturals continuously put runs on the board and lose 8-2. to two. Series ends in a 3-3 split. San Antonio now 23-19 and 19 on the season. Next up, they're back on the road all this week, Tuesday through Sunday against the Frisco Rough Riders.
The fight of the summer for San Antonio boxing fans less than a week away. The countdown on for the main event on Showtime pay-per-view between Gervonta Davis and our own world champ Mario Barrios. Both fighters are undefeated and Barrios is putting his title belt on the line to face Davis, who is moving up two weight classes to face El Azteca. There's been a lot of attention on this fight, so we wanted to know if this training camp feels any different considering the amount of attention this uh, fight is attracting. No, it doesn't feel, you know, any different. Um, I get ready for every one of my fights as if it's the biggest fight of my career. Uh, with this one, it's no different, you know. Um, I mean, of course, you know, the opponent I have in front of me is, is uh, a lot dangerous, um, a lot more dangerous. But, um, you know, we're making sure we're, we're taking care of, you know, everything. And, uh, you know, I'm going into this fight with uh, full confidence, you know, in my preparation with my team. Mario Davis takes place Saturday in Atlanta. You can buy the fight for $69.99, and we wish Barrios good luck as he defends his title. Yeah, a lot of issues on the road at I-35 and Alamos. Check back with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, that's definitely right. A lot of issues this morning for a Monday as well. So uh, take a look here at 35 at Alamo. This is a view from TransGuide. Uh, as we've been telling you all morning long, this crash has been there since 2 this morning. So it's been a little over four hours now that we've had this scene that looks like it's still developing right now. And we can tell you uh, that Katrina Weber is actually out there on the ground, and she's been getting us information. And what she's been telling us is that this stems from a chase that sent one BCSO deputy to the hospital. She'll have a full report on that coming up later this morning on GMSA, so stay with us for that. But taking a look here on our maps, this was I-35 southbound right at South Alamo. Thankfully, as the morning has picked up, we have not seen it cause that many issues out on the road if you're leaving the downtown San Antonio area. But this is something that we are going to be continuing to keep tabs on because as we know, people are heading out the door. We're going to start seeing that morning rush hour, so this could potentially be a big problem. Uh, taking a look here at the uh, inbound time. So if you are going to be coming in from any of these locations, thankfully things are still looking pretty good right now. Coming in from Highway 90 on Castroville, we're looking at 19 minutes right now. And from Bernie on I-10, we're looking at 24 minutes. And even coming in from Wolverde on 281, things are still pretty good at 26 minutes. But again, if you are coming through I-35 southbound, the ramp right now is closed as this investigation continues. Again, Katrina Weber will have her full report later here on GMSA. Mike's got your forecast. Thank you very much, Stephen. And uh, boy, get ready because when you step outside this morning, it is hot. It is humid out there to, uh, to say the least. And oh, darn, I guess my little neat little graphics aren't going to work here. What we can show you, though, is uh, lots, lots of clouds out there this morning, as well as uh, maybe a couple of breaks here and there. Heat index readings later on today, uh, 105, 110, even higher than that, down to the uh, south and southwest. And so that's why we do have heat advisories that go into effect today, as well as excessive heat warnings in our southern counties. Now, uh, one or two showers uh, around the area. We've got a few of them off to the east this morning, and that'll be the situation. We'll still keep a lot of clouds around, and they are going to start to break up. Now, by this evening, 7.30, this computer model really doesn't have any rain around here. Maybe a stray shower or two. But as far as the line of rain and the thunderstorms that we are anticipating, that's going to be later on. So a lot of computer models, actually most computer models now are in agreement that this is going to be not until later on tonight. So it won't have any uh, effect or impact on the river parade this evening. Some of those storms could be on the stronger side. There is that potential there that uh, could have some high winds and hail, very small potential that they could become severe. This is going to be into the early morning hours of tomorrow, and then we will see more sunshine. We also, this is along a kind of rare late season front that's going to be sliding on through here. So that's going to actually get rid of some of the humidity, <coughs> excuse me, as well as bring down slightly lower temperatures. I mean, we're talking mid 90s down to low 90s and slightly lower humidity, but we'll take anything we can get. There's a few of those showers off to the east this morning, and there is that front again up to the north of us. Off to the east, there is Tropical Storm Claudette. Now, this did move across southeast United States, lost some of its strength, and it has regained Tropical Storm status. And a viewer just uh, emailed and asked, how does that happen if it's on land? Because it goes over land, loses all of its, its energy, but it started to regain strength. My guess would be is the fact that it was so close to the open waters of the ocean right here. The center of circulation was still technically over land, but it was drawing in all that warm, moist air. And so that was feeding it and kind of refurbishing that storm a little bit. And that's going to just continue to work its way off into the Atlantic Ocean. So for us today, we are going to be up to 90 at noon with 
going to call it mostly sunny skies. Still a few leftover clouds around here. Again, we have a few of those showers off to the east this morning. And then later on this afternoon, 96. Heat index is going to be about 105 to 110. Higher than that down to the south and southwest. A couple of storms around tonight, but that's going to be later on tonight. Shouldn't have any problem as far as the uh, river parade is concerned. There's the heat advisory, the orange area, everybody except for the hill country up until 8 o'clock this evening, and then the excessive heat warning. And this is including Catula, Laredo, over toward Live Oak counties. We're going to see those heat uh, index readings about 110, 115, or even higher than that with all this humidity around here. Bit of a break tomorrow. We have those storms late tonight. Bit of a break tomorrow. Right back to the heat and the humidity. To finish up the week, we're looking at upper 90s and then hopefully some more rain by maybe Sunday. Well, at least there's a little break in between yes, all that. for a day. <laughs> we'll we'll take, take it. Thank you, Mike. 622, about 80 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, Prime Day is no longer just for Amazon. We're going to tell you about some other retailers joining in on the discounts. In this morning's GMA First Look, let the battle of the summer sales begin. This kind of savings event, I would say, has become on par almost with Black Friday or Cyber Mondays. Overnight, Amazon kicking off its two-day Prime Day event, but more retailers than ever are getting in on the action, from Target and Walmart to Home Depot and Old Navy. It is game time, and the retailers are coming in in swarms to get in on the action. And this year, the pandemic bringing big deals in the kitchen. People have been home and they've been cooking for themselves. There's going to be um, quite a few really high-end cookware things up for grabs. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have your hour-by-hour -hour Prime Day game plan to help you score the biggest savings. We'll tell you which deals you should take and which deals you should skip. With your GMA First Look, I'm Janae Norman, ABC News, New York. Check this out. They're calling it the future of racing. A company called Airspeeder conducted its first unpiloted test flight of an electric flying race car. The flight was remote controlled and took place in Australia under the watch of aviation officials. Airspeeder hopes to hold Grand Prix races this year. Reminds me a little bit of land speeders in Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Thank uh, you for zip, saying that. Zipping across the <laughs> desert, there, right? Uh, visiting the Ewoks. Yeah, mm. I can I can see that now. Jawas, Jawas. Uh, the little, oh, yes, yes, you're right. The you're Ewoks right. are the really From furry the, ones. Yes. The Jawas are the ones with the hoods. The yes. Right. The, that yeah, very yeah. violent ones. They, they can be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Okay, more Star Wars knowledge yeah. coming up right now, about 626 and 80 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, questions remain following an overnight shooting on the city's west side. We're going to tell you what we know now. And there's been some traffic delays uh, over near 35 South past Guadalupe. Stephen Cavazos has some ways to get around it. Katrina Weber is standing by with a live report from the scene. And speaking of traffic delays, to look at that incident there at I-35 in Alamo. Again, we'll be checking with Stephen Cavazos after the break. The driver is in a lot of trouble and a world of hurt after an overnight crash. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says he was trying to run from a police officer when he hit one of their deputies. I'll tell you how this might affect your commute coming up. One man is dead this morning as a result of a shooting last night. Details ahead. We are officially sizzling. It's only dropped down to about 80 degrees overnight. The sun is coming up right now on the first full day of summer. 2021. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, June 21st. We hope you had a great Father's Day weekend. Yes, happy Monday. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you had a good good day. It was very nice, and uh, I know a lot of the restaurants were super busy yesterday. Yes, yes. Back to normal today. Yeah, we went out too. Uh, it wasn't too bad. We went early, and you had a good Father's Day as well. We had a fantastic uh, had a fantastic Father's Day. We went out for uh, kind of a, a late lunch, early dinner, mm -hmm. and yeah, everybody people were waiting in line, but a lot of folks out celebrating Father's Day. So it was, it was still very nice. And of course, summer began late last night. And I hate to say it, but the the weather and the calendar are really matching up. That's not a good thing this morning because it is so humid out there this morning. Uh, humidity has really come back up and it's going to be sticking around throughout the rest of today. Yeah, 80. That's it. Dew point 75. That's just 
too humid out there. We do have a couple of showers well off to the east, even a couple of thunderstorms, but those are kind of drifting a little further off to the east, maybe a little sprinkle here and there, and that's about it. Heat index 85 in town, 87 Port SA, Randolph, 88 Canyon Lake, 93 is what it feels like right now at Stinson. Moderate mold and pigweed is on the light side. Updated uh, allergen pollen count is going to be coming out in about an hour or so. We do have a heat advisory later on this afternoon through 8 o'clock tonight, and that's for heat index readings about 105 or higher than that. Does not include the hill country and then the excessive heat warning down to the south. Heat index reading is going to be about 110 or even 115 or higher than that. And warm, humid, some of that showers, some of those uh, showers and that rain to the east. And then again, those heat index readings are going to be very, very high this afternoon. That's a dangerous situation. So if you are heading out this afternoon, if you are going down to the river parade tonight, make sure you hydrate and just really take it easy. Lots of lots of ice water is the best idea. A few storms then later on tonight. It looks like they're all going to be coming in here after the river parade, so that shouldn't be a problem. And then we get a slight break in the weather tomorrow with temperatures and humidity. Won't last long, though, because the thermometer goes right back up by the end of the week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's the latest, sir? Mike, so watching the situation here at 35 at Alamo, the view from Transkai doesn't show much right now, but we can tell you this has been a very active scene and it's been going on for several hours now. Just take a look right here. We do have what appears to be some cones that have been laid out right by this ramp. Uh, that's because there was a major crash that was reported there overnight and it's been there for a little over four hours now and we actually have a vehicle right there. A major crash that actually sent one BCSO deputy to the hospital. Katrina Weber's going to have a full report coming up in just a moment here, but let's take a look at our map right now. I-35 southbound at South Alamo not causing many issues right now, but again, it is, has been there for some time. And of course, as we know, as the morning picks up, that closure could impact uh, our driver's early morning commute. So we'll be watching that one pretty closely here. Uh, we did have a stall that looks like it just cleared moments ago here from Highway 90 uh, westbound right at Zazamora. So that's resolved itself very quickly, which is a good sign if you're going to be coming in from Castroville or leaving the downtown San Antonio area, I should say. Uh, but the big thing that we are watching right now again is this crash at 35 at Alamo. Katrina Weber's been out there all morning long with the latest. What's it looking like right now? Well, right now that ramp, the on-ramp here at Guadalupe uh, uh, to 35 stop is still closed, but some positive signs. We have a tow truck here that appears to have loaded the car that belonged to the sheriff's office. Actually, the tow truck is on its way out, but it did pick up the sheriff's car and now is stopping next to the other car that was involved in this crash. This goes back to about 2 o'clock this morning. Let me have you look at the video so you can see how things were then. Uh, according to what we were told by the Bear County Sheriff's Office, a driver who was running from a UTSA police officer hit the back of an unmarked Bear County Sheriff's car. Uh, that deputy was then thrown into the wall. He did not suffer any serious injuries, but was taken to a hospital to be treated. The driver of the car got out, tried to run away, jumped off a bridge, and broke several bones, according to the sheriff's office. He was taken to a hospital to be treated. And they do plan to also test him for possible uh, intoxication. They say that this happened right around the time that Fiesta events were, round, were uh, wrapping up for the night. So they're going to check and see if he may have been under the influence of something. But again, the reason he ran is because he allegedly ran a red light downtown. Reporting live from downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, San Antonio police say one person is dead following a shooting overnight. Happened around 10 p.m. in the 800 block of Pleasant Park. That's on the west side, just south of 151. Right now, information is limited, but we know that one man shot and killed another man. Police tell us the shooter took off. However, investigators say they know who he is. The victim was taken to a hospital where he later died. The mother of a young father who was shot and killed during a large ranch party says she forgives that shooter, but wants that person to come forward. 23-year-old Stephen Henderson was at a party last Sunday off of Loop 410 at Somerset when gunshots rang out, hitting and killing him. His mother says Henderson was a loving man and a father of two with another on the way. I know that he's here with me. He'll always be here with me. He'll be here with his children also. Cherish every moment you have with your children because a bullet has no name on it. 
The family is planning a balloon release where Henderson was killed on the south side this Friday at 7.30 p.m. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers are now asking for your help identifying the person responsible. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. Big news about the Olympics this morning. The Tokyo Summer Games will now allow some local fans to attend when the games open in just over a month. Organizers have set a limit of 50% capacity up to a maximum of 10,000 fans at all Olympic venues. The decision announced after so-called five party talks with local organizers, the International Olympic Committee and other entities. The decision contradicts the country's top medical advisor who recommended last week the safest way to hold with the Olympics would be without any fans. Uh, as we said, the summer games begin coming up here on July 23rd. This morning, Claudette continues to create dangerous conditions out east. The storm is being blamed for causing a pileup that killed 10 people. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. Breaking overnight, a tornado touching down just outside of Chicago. All units coming into this area, we've got uh, major damage. The twister reportedly collapsing buildings and knocking down trees and power lines. Roads blocked by debris with ambulances unable to get by. This says Tropical Depression Claudette takes aim at the southeast. Heavy rain and flash flooding are expected from Florida up through the Carolinas and a tropical storm warning posted overnight for most of North Carolina's coast. Claudette wreaking havoc over the weekend as it moved through the south spawning multiple tornadoes. At least 50 homes damaged or destroyed in this neighborhood in Bruton, Alabama. Angela Spears says a tornado sucked her out of her mobile home. Next thing I know, the walls came falling out and I went flying out the door. Authorities saying hydroplaning is likely what caused this 18 vehicle pile up near Montgomery on Saturday. 10 people losing their lives, nine of them children. Authorities identifying two of the victims, 29 year old Cody Fox and his nine month old daughter, Ariana. Also killed eight children who were riding in a van from the Tallapoosa County Girls Ranch, a home for abused and neglected girls. Michael Smith, the CEO of the Alabama Sheriff's Youth Ranches, had just visited the girls in Gulf Shores during their beach vacation. They all wrote me little sticky notes and <clears throat> Oh, put these sticky notes over my office saying how they look forward to me being down there and, and being together. They were on their way back when the van crashed. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Fiesta is underway and there's a full slate of events this week, starting with the Texas Cavaliers River Parade. That's tonight from 7 to 9. And starting tomorrow, the big event that a lot of people have been waiting for, the start of Niosa, a night in Old San Antonio. Plus, the carnival opens every night at the Alamo Dome. For a complete list of events or more details on these events, you can head to our website at kset.com. Right now, 639, about 80 degrees. Ahead on GMSA, details on the great outdoor scavenger hunt that sends you all over the state to see some of the best spots in Texas. Introducing your 2021 Fiesta Royalty, powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Hi, I'm Philip Peacock back in King Antonio, the 98. Viva Fiesta! Meet this year's Texas Cavaliers reigning king, Antonio the 98. Being King Antonio is a pretty amazing experience. Uh, you realize that people are very attracted to the, uh, to the uniform and to the mystique of who King Antonio is. The Texas Cavaliers is a civic organization that honors the defenders of the Alamo. It's important that we continue to remember the, the men who made Texas free and uh, not only the, the signers of the Declaration of Independence, but the defenders here at the Alamo. And King Antonio has a family connection to Texas independence. My great, great, great grandfather, William Christian Menifee, signed the Texas Declaration. One of 59 people at Washington on the Brazos to declare independence from Mexico. The Cavaliers River Parade is one of the most unique in the country and is a parade with a purpose. I would say that uh, one of my favorite events of fiestas is, is the Texas Cavaliers River Parade because we take that platform and showcase all of the children's charities in San Antonio that are doing such great work and it's our opportunity to help them get their message out.
Welcome back. It's about 644. Are you ready for an outdoor adventure? Texas Parks and Wildlife is back this year with the ultimate scavenger hunt that encompasses the whole state. Max Massey tells us how it works. Now that pandemic closures are winding down, the great outdoor scavenger hunt put on by Texas Parks and Wildlife is back. This is the ultimate way to explore all the state's 268,000 square miles while having some family fun and taking some good selfies along the way. There are three ways to play. First, if you're not into traveling the whole state, complete just one activity that interests you. Find some parks or activities you've never tried before and get outside. You won't win any real prizes, but the extra activity and the knowledge that you're going to earn makes you a winner anyway. Next, complete every scavenger hunt activity in a a single region. Since we live in the central Texas region, you'll be visiting places like Palmetto State Park, McKinney Falls, and the San Antonio Missions Trail. Simply sign up for the hunt and complete each task by taking a selfie and uploading it to Twitter, Instagram, or the Texas Parks and Wildlife Facebook page with the hashtag GOSH2021. Complete all five activities in your region and you'll get a downloadable certificate commemorating your achievement along with a shout out in the future issue of Texas Parks and Wildlife Magazine. Finally, for the real adventurers, if you complete all 30 activities on this year's scavenger hunt and upload all corresponding selfies to social media or the online portal, you'll win the ultimate prize, bragging rights, and the admiration of the Texas Parks and Wildlife Magazine staff. You'll also win a downloadable certificate and a two-year digital subscription to to Texas Parks and Wildlife Magazine. You would also have seen so much of the cool things our state has to offer. This year's scavenger hunt ends midnight on Labor Day, September 6th. If you have any questions, we have all those answers. Just head to KSAT.com. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Thanks so much, Max. Well, we are keeping a very close eye on this crash that has been happening that happened here at 35 at Alamo. This is a view from Transguide. As you can see, it's still a very busy scene right now. Let's go ahead and jump to the wall now. Our Katrina Weber has been out there all morning long, and what she tells us is this stems from a chase that sent one Bear County deputy to the hospital with injuries. Now, she just let me know that they're going to be clearing this out here in the next few minutes. They have about one car to clear right now, but you can see that we do have uh, some crews out there working to get that scene clear. It's been there since two this morning, so uh, quite the lengthy process for them as they continue that investigation. We'll be hearing from Cat in just the next few moments here, uh, but take a look. This is here on our maps. I-35 southbound at South Alamo where that crash was reported. Thankfully, it hasn't caused any issues for our early morning commuters, and as Katrina mentioned to me, this will be clearing up here in the next few minutes. Uh, let's go ahead and jump to another crash though that was reported here off Loop 410 westbound at Espada, uh, not causing any real issues right now along the loop, but something we'll be keeping tabs on through the morning here on GMSA as well as this crash at 35 at Alamo. Mike. Thank you very much, sir. What a cool picture. Look at this one. Cats bring cowboy sunset. That's just great. I love it. Thank you so much for the KSAT Connect shot. All right, just look at all that kind of haze hanging there along the horizon. That's all the humidity. We've got some low clouds. Uh, forecast today, forecast high temperatures, 96 in town. We're looking at low hundreds down to the southwest. But then uh, in, in and around the metropolitan area, same thing, mid and even some upper 90s. But you got to factor in the humidity and add basically 10 degrees to the temperatures, the forecast temperatures, and that's what it's going to feel like. And with those uh, heat index readings well up there 105 higher than that. That's why we do have the heat advisories and excessive heat warnings uh, that go into effect later on today. So this morning we got a couple of showers off to the east, one or two of them still left over off to the east and you know, maybe a, some mist or something here and there. Then we go into tonight and OK, so there's like one little shower here and there, but the line of uh, showers and thunderstorms that we're expecting is going to be holding off. So a lot of most all computer models are in agreement now that this is going to wait until later on this evening. So it's not going to have really any impact on the the river parade tonight. One thing, though, it is going to be hot and humid. We will still have those heat index readings way up there in the hundreds, even just right after dinner time and for the start of the parade. So lots of I mean, just a uh, Dress appropriately, lots of water, lots of water. Can't emphasize that enough. Some of those storms move through then in the overnight hours early tomorrow morning. Some could be potentially on the strong to severe side, and then things will be uh, clearing out somewhat by the afternoon. And we will get a little bit of a break in the heat and the humidity tomorrow but it won't last all that long. 90 at noon today. I'm going to call it mostly sunny skies. We'll still have a fair amount of clouds left around here. And then a high temperature today up to 96. Again, the heat index is going to feel like about 105, 110. Hotter than that down to the south. A couple of storms then later on tonight in the overnight hours. There's the outline for the heat advisory. Everybody except for the hill country. 
Again, those high heat index readings and then the excessive heat warning to Laredo uh, over toward Live Oak County and then down toward Corpus Christi. And you just got to take it easy because your body doesn't handle it all that well. Tonight, showers and thunderstorms overnight. Bit of a break in the heat and humidity tomorrow. We'll only be at 90 tomorrow. I mean, some areas won't get out of the 80s. But it's not going to last. Uh, Ste to Steph and I consider that a win. Yeah, <laughs> that's a win. Yeah, we'll enjoy take it. it tomorrow. Back to the the heat and humidity. At the end of the week, up to 98 on Friday. A couple of uh, showers then, maybe by s late Saturday, Sunday. Well, we'll deal with Friday when it gets here. Yeah, I mean that one day will you know help us power through the rest of the week. Indeed. Yeah. There you go. Again, the eternal optimist. I know. And he's pointing at her. Yes. Uh, right now, it's 649, about 80 degrees. <laughs> and important news as you crawl out of bed this morning. Experts say getting those extra Z's is more important than ever. Tomorrow on GMSA, the new research that shows why poor sleep is being linked to dementia and even early death. This morning, if you are watching from San Antonio Southside, a special good morning to you. That's where this live cam is right now. And we have enough humidity and perhaps even haze out there. It is hard to see the downtown skyline. We'll be back. Welcome to Allstate. You already pay for car insurance. Why not take your home along for the ride? Allstate. Here, better protection costs a whole lot less. You're in good hands. Click or call to bundle today. No matter what sometimes keeps you up, Nature Made helps you win the night. Our melatonin gummies are scientifically developed to help you fall asleep faster naturally. Nature Made, the number one pharmacist recommended vitamin and supplement brand. It's very common to have both sensitivity and gum issues. Dentists and hygienists will want to recommend Sensodyne Sensitivity and Gum. You get the sensitivity relief as well as improved gum health, all in one. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber, live downtown with the last gasps of what had been an overnight crash. Both cars that were involved now attached to a tow truck and should be towed away here soon. This is I-35 South near Guadalupe. This has been shut down since about 2 o'clock this morning. We're told the driver was running from UTSA police when he hit the back of a Bear County Sheriff's Office uh, car. That deputy not injured badly, but taken to a hospital to get checked out. The driver of the car, we're told, jumped off the bridge trying to get away, but broke several bones. He also went to the hospital for treatment. He's going to be evaluated for possible DWI because they say this happened when Fiesta was shutting down. But this highway, this on-ramp should be open here pretty soon, as soon as that car is towed away, we're told. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thanks so much, Katrina. Been out there all morning long, and we've been keeping an eye here in the traffic lab. You can see this is a view from Transguide on that on-ramp that she was just talking about. Uh, yes, the wreckers are out there. Looks like this should be clearing out in the next few moments, but as she mentioned, this has been going on since 2 this morning. Major crash out there. Thankfully, as the morning is picking up, uh, we should see this uh, wrapping up very soon for that morning rush hour just in time as well. Now, we've been watching this here in the map off I-35 southbound at South Alamo. It hasn't caused very many issues, and so again, that should be wrapping up moments. Momentarily. Now we have spotted another crash here on the northbound uh, north side of San Antonio off Loop 1604 eastbound right at 281 at that interchange right there intersection I should say so nothing major right now but as we know people are heading out we could see some delays and we'll be watching that closely right here on GMSA but thankfully some resolution coming up here Mike. Thank you very much, sir. And boy, is it hot and humid out there this morning. It feels like 85 in town, 95 at Stinson. Heat advisory uh, through this evening for everybody except for the Hill Country. And then that excessive heat warning down to the uh, south. We're going to have temperatures 96, but the heat index will be about 105 to 110. A happy summer, everybody? <laughs> yes, happy yes. summer. We happy get a summer. break. We yes. get a break soon, right? right. <laughs> yes. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you back here at 9.